Welcome, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to the Committee for Economic Development's Distinguished Leaders Award Dinner. I'm Steve Odlin, the CEO of uh, the Committee for Economic Development, and I'm very pleased to welcome everybody uh, here tonight. This has been an exciting day for CED. Uh, for those of you who were not in Times Square this afternoon, we had the pleasure of honoring all of our awardees tonight with, uh, at, the, at the closing bell at the NASDAQ. Uh, so that was, that was fun. We had all of our show going on out in Times Square and the pictures, and uh, it, was a, it was a great uh, event for us. I'd like to thank tonight uh, our 79 sponsors whose name you'll see in the program and you've been seeing on the uh, screens and, and around the room. Uh, tonight would not be possible without your support, and we very much appreciate all that you've done. We're here tonight to recognize six exceptional leaders that have commendable, commendably led their companies and their communities and made a, an enormous impact on, on society. First is Patricia Wirtz with the Peter G. Peterson St Business Statesmanship Award. Second, Henry Kravis with the Excellence in Public Policy Award. Third, John Watson with the Corporate Citizenship Award. J.B. Pritzker, with the Owen B. Butler Education Excellence Award, Michael Duke with the Global Leadership Award, and finally Roger Ferguson with our Trustee Leadership Award. I also want to acknowledge the many past awardees who are here with us tonight, as well as our Executive Committee and Trustees. Now I'd like to introduce our co-chair, Maggie Wilderotter, who will uh, introduce our first awardee. For 10 years, Maggie, has been the CEO of Frontier Communications, which is one of the largest uh, independent providers of telecommunication services. Prior to serving at Frontier, Maggie was an executive in numerous companies, including Microsoft and Wig Communications, ATT, and Macaw Cellular. Uh, in 2012, Maggie became chair of the President's National Security Telecommunications Advisory Committee, and. Uh, you know, one of the key parts of CED's work is developing policies and raising awareness around the importance of having more women in leadership. And all of these issues are supported by Maggie. And uh, I'm, I'm especially proud to say that Maggie is CED's very first female co-chair. With that, I give you Maggie Wilderotter. Tonight, I am twice blessed. As CED's newest co-chair, I have the honor of presenting the Peter G. Peterson Business Statesmanship Award to Patricia Wirtz. And I also have the honor of introducing the man behind this award. In an interview with Newsweek in 2010, Pete spoke of his Greek immigrant father who worked day and night as a dishwasher, saved every penny, and opened a 24-7 diner in Kearney, Nebraska, which happens to be a frontier market, by the way. <laughs> Pete worked there from the age of eight. He sent Pete to college and gave those less fortunate a job and also capability. Pete's father was well respected because he believed in America and the American dream. And he passed that on to his son, Pete. Pete is a success story in every sense of the word. In his CD tenure, he is the longest serving trustee that we have. He is outspoken in his belief that CEOs must contribute to our nation's long-term growth and vitality. He wants us to be better than we are and to never give up on the fight to make America a better country, a beacon for the rest of the world. I know that all here tonight are committed to living up to his standards. So it is now my pleasure to introduce to you Pete Peterson to say a few words. Pete. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, Maggie. You have been a fantastic addition to the leadership of the CED as co-chair. As mentioned, my name is Peter G. Peterson, and I established the Peter G. Peterson Foundation. Well named, don't you think? 
I've been involved with CED for many more years than you could imagine, and I'm proud to help present the Peter G. Peterson Business Statesmanship Award. Given the size of my ego, I used to think that it would be very hard to find someone who would be worthy of an award named after me. But alas, and I say this sadly, year after year, they somehow managed shattering my illusions. In fact, this year's recipient is extraordinarily worthy of recognition. Patricia Wirtz is the perfect example of business statesmanship, and I hope she will consider accepting this award, even though it has my name on it. <laughs> Thank you all for coming, and congratulations to Patricia for a very well-deserved recognition. Thank you again, Pete. You could uh, be a stand-up comic in your next life. Well, my wonderful friend and colleague, Pat Wurst, runs a company that feeds and fuels the world. Archer Daniels Midland is a huge company and a great success. But Pat is not receiving the Peter G. Peterson Business Statesmanship Award based on increases in shareholder value but because she champions the public good and holds herself to the highest standards of ethics and integrity. Pat and I share something special that helped make us who we are. Parents who adored us, spent time with us, and viewed every car trip, every vacation, every interaction as an opportunity to learn more about others and about ourselves. Pat's parents gave her an incredible foundation, showing her that education, helping others, and continuous learning are the key to personal and professional success. As a child, Pat got to do some very cool stuff, like touring a window factory or the Heinz ketchup plant. Those visits with her parents gave her a keen interest in how things are made, valuable experience and training at eight years old for the future CEO of ADM. Pat isn't a CEO just making a difference. She makes a huge impact. Pat focuses on safety, sustainability, cost management, and performance. She sets a high bar for personal excellence, and expects her team to do the same. She gives of herself, not just to ADM and the public board she sits on, but to many nonprofit and industry groups, along with global and national initiatives, including the President's Export Council, the Business Council, the International Business Council, and the World Economic Forum. And that's just on Mondays. After all these years of doing remarkable things quietly, it is so rewarding that CED is appropriately recognizing Pat's body of work in statesmanship. She is admired by her colleagues and is an amazing role model for corporate and personal citizenship. However, Pat is the type of leader who does remarkable things without fanfare. That humble leadership sums up why she deserves this award. Pat never makes it about her. It's always about what her actions mean. It's about what she does, just as statesmanship is not about where you rank in the world, but what you give to the world. It is a gift given to those with wisdom, integrity, ethics, kindness, and service earn that respect that cannot be bought. And that's who Pat is. She has earned it. So it is my complete honor to present the Peter G. Peterson Business Statesmanship Award 
to someone who has truly earned it and who I admire so much, my dear friend and colleague, Pat Wurst. Pat? Well, thank you, Maggie and Pete, both for that kind introduction, and thank all of you for being here tonight. I'd like to first begin by expressing my appreciation to the CED senior leadership as well as the Board of Trustees, actually in honoring ADM here tonight with this award. I'd also like to acknowledge and recognize my fellow honorees, all of whom are great leaders and truly deserving of recognition. Mike, Henry, Roger, uh, JB, John, I'm just truly honored to be in your company. It gives me great pleasure to accept this award on behalf of my 31,000 ADM colleagues around the world. It is really their commitment to our company's success that allows ADM to champion many issues in the public interest. And a number of my colleagues are here today. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I'd like to acknowledge you too. <clears throat> it's a privilege to accept an award that was actually named for Pete Peterson. In his long career in the private and public sectors, Pete has come to exemplify what is often called servant leadership. You know, servant leaders are those who ask not how can I succeed, but rather how can I serve, or how can I help others to succeed. Servant leaders recognize that the most satisfying successes are those that are shared and that they are all the more meaningful if the organizations are guided by a shared purpose. At ADM, the, our purpose, the reason we exist, is to serve vital needs. We serve those needs by connecting the harvest to the home, transforming farmers' crops, <clears throat> excuse me, crops into the hundreds of food ingredients that help nourish millions of people every day. It's important and it's gratifying work. And because we do this work throughout the world, we have the opportunity to improve the lives of so many people and communities throughout the world. We do this not just through the products and services that we offer, but the jobs and economic opportunity we provide, but also through social investments and through the advocacy in the public sector. Our social investments help to build a responsible and sustainable agricultural supply chain one that's capable of serving the needs of a growing world. Two quick examples. For instance, we know that small holder farmers in developing worlds lose much of their grain each year to pests, to disease, to mishandling, or to poor storage. Losses that can make up the difference between hunger and prosperity. That's why we founded the ADM Institute for the Prevention of Post-Harvest Loss. It helps teach growers how to effectively store and handle and transport their grain. One more quick example, because we're one of the largest cocoa processors in the world, we operate in West Africa, also in Southeast Asia, we understand the tremendous challenges that growers have, cocoa farmers and families, in their communities. So we've created numerous programs that address issues raising, ranging from soil quality to safe pesticide use to child labor issues and HIV AIDS. Now our public policy advocacy, like that of the CED, focuses on economic growth and opportunity, competition and open markets, and on nonpartisan solutions to very critical national issues. We advocate for free trade policies, in particular those that include, encourage the free flow of agricultural products wherever they're grown to wherever they're needed. Our work with the President's Export Council helps make it easier and more cost effective for American farmers to compete in the global agricultural markets. And through the US-China Business Council, we work to ease trade barriers that prevent China from benefiting from such US farm productivity. And I know many of you in the room can point to similar efforts that your companies do to address global issues that impact the world. Indeed, many of us share the belief that one of the greatest satisfactions in a career in a global business is the opportunity to make a positive difference in the lives of hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of people. It's through our investments and our advocacy and we and our companies, we can help 
address economic disparities and bring prosperity and hope to those yearning for a better life. We create a healthier world and we contribute to eradication of worldwide diseases. We help ensure that the environment we, care, we share is cared for and protected. And we work to see that the self-determination that we enjoy here is extended to many, many more. For those of us who are driven by a passion for business and for service, these are very compelling opportunities. And like Pete Peterson and so many of you, I believe business can make a, be a very positive force for change. With a shared purpose, a desire to serve, organization and individuals alike can accomplish great things. Once again, thank you for this tremendous honor and letting me share a few thoughts and reflections with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you.